return from overseas and I know a lot of my friends or people I know have been in that same situation where they live a life and it's just kind of go, go, go. And with everything that's happened, we've now been forced to stop. I really struggled for the first couple of weeks of my isolation. I returned from overseas and I was forced into a two week uh, mandatory quarantine and obviously getting forced to kind of be still and do nothing. That was a really foreign thing for me for the last five years, you know, working in conservation and managing a research station and, you know, just being constantly on the go um, to now having this total lifestyle change of just having to stop. I returned from obviously overseas for the last year and a half. I haven't been in Australia. So that lifestyle change and adaptation in itself was such an overwhelming feeling. I just kind of wanted to make this video just to kind of inspire and motivate people that you know you're not alone um there is other people in the situation who are just trying to figure out what to do um by having to stop and be still because it is such a foreign concept for a lot of people so i'm utilizing this time which i know a lot of you guys are as well to kind of stop and look within myself and to do that self-care that I've been needing to do for the past five years. I actually quit my job because a big reason was I just wasn't mentally capable and functioning at my best and it wasn't fair to be working in a job where I couldn't give it my all. So I made the decision at the start of the year to quit my job and to return back to Australia to focus more on myself. And it was a big kind of decision for me um, because for once in my life I was actually putting myself first um, which is a very foreign concept to me, especially the line of work that I am in. Constantly putting others and the world and animals first. So I decided to take that kind of selfish approach. And yeah, um, I kind of manifested that, but a little bit too extreme in the sense that I have literally been forced to stop because of lockdown. The reason of this video was I just wanted to give you guys a couple of little like motivational tips and tricks and how to handle self-care and self-love because that's what I've been focusing on um, these past few weeks. Basically, the first thing I do always is I write a list. Um, I don't know if you're like me, but lists, even if I write them and never look at them again, uh, lists kind of, you know, keep me going. The first thing I did when I got back, I kind of wrote like a daily routine and things to do and things to achieve while in lockdown. And I had this big list of kind of things, like, oh, you know, I want to do this and I want to achieve this. And then I kind of stopped and I thought, no, that's not what this is about. And that's not what this kind of reflection is about. This is about me stopping and being still and resting and healing. I don't need to, you know, learn how to do some crazy yoga inversion or learn to play my harmonica that's been sitting there for the last six years. I need to do little achievable goals. And I think that's what this is about, is doing things that are achievable and not forcing yourself into things that are, you know, too much. I wrote like the basic kind of things down and I'll go through that with you and then I'll kind of just go through a couple of other little things that I think might help you guys. My daily routine, the first thing I usually do is I wake up and I have a big glass of water. That can honestly change my entire day. So having a big glass of water um, just kind of resets your system. If you think about it, you've been fasting for the last six to eight hours, however long you sleep for. So to break that fast when you wake up, the first thing you really should be putting into your body is something that's going to vitalize you. And obviously water is the best thing for that. Before you have your coffee, before you have your breakfast, have a glass of water. I try to stick to this, but it doesn't always work. Yoga, wake up and do some morning stretches. It doesn't have to be an intense half a session. Just stretch your body. Simple stretches, um, just get that body moving and your muscles flowing. Again, you haven't been moving for six to eight hours. You wanna get your body going. I've tried to do yoga once a day. It, 
it doesn't happen and that's okay. That's totally fine. Um, obviously follow that by a bit of meditation as well, if you can, just to set your intentions for the day, um, some nice positive affirmations. So one of my big goals when I got back was my mom has just moved house and basically it was a total abandoned garden. So I threw myself, day one being back in Australia, I threw myself into totally building up this garden, which was probably my way of adapting because I couldn't be still straight away. So I had to find something to do and that was totally transforming this garden. Planted vegetables, herbs, weeded, mowed, did everything. You can see on my Instagram, like the before and after photos. Threw myself into that. So every morning, now that that's done, all I can kind of do is maintain it. And now um, I'm kind of at a standstill of like, oh, what project can I do now? And that's kind of the reason of this vlog as well is, it's okay, be still. So I get up and I have my morning coffee and I water my garden. And that's kind of like my little alone, peaceful. And I also use that as a meditation as well. Sometimes I can't just like sit there and meditate. I have always really struggled with that, just being able to sit there, be still and meditate. It's not for everyone. Um, when I do do it, I find it's totally trans transforming, but I'm not always in the right mindset to do that. So for me, I can meditate with my eyes open. And for me, that's just standing there, watering my garden, watching the birds, watching my plants literally grow. Um, and that is a form of meditation in itself. So maybe a form of meditation for you is painting or drawing, crafting, anything like that as well. That's also a form of meditation. It doesn't just have to be sitting there in a place of stillness. It's really, really important to have a healthy breakfast. I'm the worst at this. I ask anyone I know, I don't eat breakfast. And even when I was in school, I had to get forced to eat my breakfast. Um, so brekkie isn't really something that I do. I generally have a late breakfast or we call it a brunch. That's generally my most nutritious meal of the day is my brunch. And I just have my same old thing every single day. I think it's really important in this time as well to check in with your friends constantly. A lot of people are kind of doing like social media detoxes and staying off their phone. I, I thought about doing that at first and just steering, like staying off my phone this entire lockdown. One, I didn't think that was an achievable goal. And also I thought it was really important to stay connected to my loved ones in this time. I make it my main focal point this lockdown is to check in daily with my friends. I've had a lot of chats to people and some people aren't coping and that's okay. You know, I've been seeing a lot of memes go around or whatever saying, you know, if you haven't learned a new instrument, if you haven't found a new hobby and if you haven't built something this lockdown, then you're not doing it right. No, that's, that's not, that's not correct. You know, I think everybody's dealing with this in their own way. And for you, if it means you just stayed in bed watching Netflix for the last two weeks, you go girl amazing like that's an awesome achievement in itself as well just to be still and to do nothing and to rest and to heal and if that's your way of healing absolutely go for it as long as you're drinking water and as long as you're eating good um, and looking and nourishing your body you know and still moving your body at least once a day I think that's really important as well I'm trying to utilize this time to do some self-care things I've been lacking in so long I didn't even brush my hair or wash my hair for a good three, four months of last year, just little things like that. When I do brush my hair, for example, I just feel like a transformed woman and I feel pretty and nice. And I obviously haven't brushed my hair today. So I chucked this thing on. I just wanted to share some of my little like personal tips and tricks of self-care and the things that I do. So the first thing that I kind of been utilizing a lot because I haven't had one in so long is taking a bath, taking a simple bath with candles and incense. Mm. I have missed that. If you can also put your bath water then on the garden, saving water as well. Another thing I try and do is I make my own uh, face scrubs. So super, super, super simple. And another thing um, I've been trying to get back on track is looking after my hair. It is super, super sun bleached and disgusting from living on tropical islands and being at sea for the last five years. I came home and I had like a little surprise present from this brand, um, Pure. These guys do um, super like organic, gluten-free, paraben, sulfate-free, all that beautiful hair masks. And even mum's been using it. We're just like, oh my God. So do a hair mask. You can also make your own, just Google some recipes and stuff. But just doing those little kind of self-care tricks, face masks and hair masks and having a bath. I know people say that all the time, but it's really hard for us to force ourselves to kind of do those little self-care things as well. Another thing I do, I've been trying to do, and I've only just kind of started this, is journaling my dreams. 
I was going through <laughs> some of my past dreams I wrote like six years ago. So funny. I was applying for a job at the Freddo Frog Resort. My competition was a friend and I kept looking at her application to compare. Just weird shit that I dream about. But this dream journal is really cool. You can record what happened. You can then reflect. Um, and then you can like kind of sketch your dream as well. So I can't even remember where I got this from. But there's so many of these little things. Like even if you just get a simple journal and just record your dreams, you will be so surprised at the lessons you learn and the symbolism of your dreams. And that's something I've been learning because I've been having the most vivid dreams this year. Last year, the years before that, I never used to dream. It was something that I was kind of jealous about of people who could dream. And this year, coming into 2020, oh, every night that they're super vivid like magical dreams. So I decided I need to start recording these because I don't know if it's the universe trying to send me a message or what can I learn from my dreams. And I've started doing that and I've started learning little things about myself. So give it a go and try and, um, you know, reflect on the symbolism of some of your dreams. So the last couple of things I wanted to talk about were another thing that comes into play with moving your body is dancing. I have just discovered the power of dance these last couple of weeks. When I was little, I danced all the time. Um, and I guess it's about really embracing that inner child within yourself again. Remember when you were little and you would just dance and sing and you didn't have any cares or worries in the world and you weren't worrying about people were thinking of you. And I guess that's what I'm trying to get back in touch with as well. I love dancing and I always have. So I've really just tried to find myself moving and grooving um, wherever I am, you know, and I've really been going out into nature and dancing. I've been dancing in my bedroom. Um, really try and get back in touch with this really kind of raw feminine energy, energy that you do have within yourself because you'll just find yourself boogieing everywhere. Oh, hey. And then obviously just getting in touch with nature and just walking and being outside if you can. I know some countries uh, you are stuck inside, but even if you have a garden or a window, just sitting by it, uh, nature soothes everything. thing is a super new thing uh, I obviously have a lot of time on my hands so I thought this would be a cool way to kind of kill time uh, kind of stay in touch with my friends as well maybe I can feel like I'm having a chat to you guys and yeah if there's anything else you guys kind of want to know or what I get up to or any other like tips and tricks please let me know um, I mean I'm no expert by any means but I just thought it'd be a cool little fun idea to do while we are in lockdown and if it can motivate you guys to also film your day I find it super inspiring just to take my camera around and film pretty little things that I see in my garden and on my walks with my dog and it kind of grounds you and makes you stop and reflect and just make you realize how grateful you are you know and how grateful you are that you have a working moving healthy body and that you can you know take the time to look after yourself and those are if you want me to do more of these usually I just do a fun little adventure GoPro videos but I thought I might do something a bit different and just film myself talking this time so I love you all I miss you all and stay safe and healthy